I need you to know what is going on at the facility that I work at. I need to confess the things that I've done there. I work for a company called Genomix Therapies and the experiments that they are conducting, that I've helped with, are monstrous and need to be stopped at all costs. My work as a lab technician and I can with no bit of arrogance say I'm a good one and I was asked to join a project at a remote company research facility in northern Canada. What little I was told initially was that a new medical treatment was being pioneered there and that it was so revolutionary that they needed to keep it hidden away from competitors. Though spending several months in a lab in the freezing north was hardly my idea of a good time, I was guaranteed that it would lead to a higher role and there was a bonus in store including stock in what was sure to be the biggest medical treatment in the world. After several flights and a bumpy landing, I arrived in a field of snow. The wind cut through me when I exited the plane and I saw a series of concrete prefab buildings. The small plane crew hurried to unload supplies and gestured for me to enter the largest of the structures. Inside the space was warm and well lit and a thin man in what I guessed was his mid-fifties stood with his hand extended while I closed the door behind me. Welcome, I'm Dr. Klein. We're so glad to have you join us up here. He grabbed my hand to shake and usher me in. The brutalist concrete outside belied a surprisingly homey feel with an open space of couches and desks, leading up to a second floor balcony overlooking the area below. I took off my jacket as Dr. Klein led me forward. Most of your colleagues are working, but let me introduce you to Dr. Brenner, our head biologist. A portly and gruff man stood up and nodded to me. Head biologist, animal handler, and whatever else a genomix seems to need. Glenn and Dr. Klein who pretended not to notice the barb. You'll be working with him as his technician, so I'll leave you to the introductions. Brenner, when you're done, we need to get started on the next round of testing later this afternoon. Please bring our new guest along as well. Dr. Klein nodded and headed off into another building. Brenner turned to me, looking me up and down before grunting. Well, welcome to the worst place on earth. Uh, come on, follow me. He turned and lumbered towards a door and punched in a code waving me to come along. We entered a tunnel and after a few silent minutes... We exited out into a cacophony of animal sounds. Cages of dogs, pigs, and monkeys yelped and wailed as Brenner pointed to a work table in the center of the room. Look around as this will be home for you. We do the live specimen testing here, and they're sending us samples faster than we can perform the experiments. What exactly are we testing? I jumped a bit as a large dog barked at me, examining the room and equipment. Mo, oh, it's a new medicine from a frankly unknown source. Apparently, the head biologist isn't privy to such information, as Brenner made mocking air quotes. But I will say what we've tested so far has shown us a great results. He motioned for me to join him near a cage with a pig. This specimen, like all the others here, is terminal. Dang thing had more tumors than actual organs, but after treatments, it's like a newborn, completely cancer-free. I marveled over the clipboard with the testing data. This can't be accurate. A full recovery in such a short amount of time. Mo oh, it is, and if it wasn't for the recent accident, I would say that it was a miracle. I cocked my head. What accident? And Brenner's eyes went wide. I've said too much. He cleared his throat loudly, changing the subject. Get the next round of testing set up for specimens 1743 and 6503 going. Lots of work to be done. Letting the comment go, I looked back at the incredible data sheet and wondered just what unknown substance could create such results. I put the clipboard back in the cage and looked down at the pig. It had a healthy vibrancy that would have won a blue ribbon in another context, but there was something off about its eyes. There was a movement in them, something unnatural, something behind them. You gonna get moving? Brenner barked. Uh, yes, sir. 
as I walked away still staring at the otherwise docile pig. The next few weeks flew by as time got a bit lost working in the concrete lab structure. And the other scientists and technicians were all pleasant enough though with different shifts and areas of work so there wasn't much interaction. I had heard from a bunkmate that I was a replacement and the last person had gone nuts. I tried to press Dr. Brenner the day after. So, are you going to tell me what happened to my predecessor? The portly man sighed. I knew the dang gossip mill would get to you eventually. Well, suffice it to say, he went crazy. And what does that mean? Brenner threw his clipboard down on the table and gestured for me to take a seat. There was an accident. A trip and fall and some of the testing samples got injected to him at a higher dose than we've ever given to any specimen here. I wanted to emergency evac him, but Dr. Klein overruled me, claiming the weather was too rough, but I know he just wanted to see what would happen. And what did happen? Brenner took a deep breath. Initially, at first, nothing. We monitored him, and like the animals here, he seemed to respond well. Slowly, everything from his cholesterol to an old scar began to get better. I think Dr. Klein was getting himself fitted for a suit for a Nobel acceptance ceremony. But as much as he physically got better, he seemed to mentally decline. At first, he would just start spacing out, staring off into the distance that the rest of us couldn't see. They then began not to sleep, not to eat. He reacted negatively any time anyone tried to get close to him, even becoming violent at one point. The poor lad would be found raving loudly that it was coming, that it was calling to him. I swallowed hard. And what is it? Heck if I know. One night he had broken out of his room and was found in the materials lab doing something. When caught there, there was some sort of struggle and he ran out into the cold. He ran out into the snow. Yeah, like I said, he went crazy. We went and looked for him, only to find his frozen body prostrating himself towards the sky. It was a sight I don't wish to relive. There was a long, awkward pause in the room. Just what are we working with here, Dr. Brenner? I don't know. It's either something that could be the next miracle medicine, or something to ruin us all. Come on, more work to do. After the conversation with Dr. Brenner, I tried to find out as much as I could about the mystery substance that we were working with. Most of the co-workers commented how they didn't know either, and only had a vague guess as to its true nature or origin. What I couldn't understand was, there was so much turnover in a remote facility like this. The gossipy bunkmate from before had already apparently left the site, and a replacement was coming. After hearing about my predecessor, these strange amounts of personnel changes, and watching the test animals act strange, I had to know more. Now I'm no spy, but I figured I could try to find some information in Dr. Klein's office. So I watched the posted shift schedules and took an expected bathroom emergency when he was to be away. I tried to nonchalantly make my way towards his office, and I lucked out that there was no one around. I'm looking around to double check that the coast was clear, I made my way into the room and shut the door quietly behind me. I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't a smoking gun exposing everything right away, as the office looked mundane and like the rest here at the site. I walked to his desk to see papers scattered around, progress reports to Genomics HQ, weather forecasts, personnel files. Everything seemed to be expected to find on a project leader's desk. What caught my eye, though, were numerous geology reports in areas far from where we were located. Around the world, different locations had been marked for digging, excavation, and other kinds of exploration. I wondered if the substance that we were working with had to be gathered from somewhere deep below the ground. My attention was then caught by reports around the moon. A topography map and geological samples were covered from back in the Apollo missions were heaped in a folder titled Project Athea. Before I could dive further, there was a PA announcement calling for Dr. Klein. The hallways were end to end, so I knew that he would have to walk back this way. 
I tripped over myself, trying to get to the door, and I cursed myself for my clumsiness. Pushing myself back up, I exited the door just in time to see Dr. Klein walking towards me. I tried to turn and walk like I belonged until I heard him call to me. Are you okay? You're scheduled to be in the lab today. Uh, yes sir, I just needed to stretch my legs. I said, trying not to sound panicky as I turned to face him. Dr. Klein stopped and looked me up and down for a few moments before nodding. Well, best get back to it then. I'm needed as well. I was about to breathe a sigh of relief when Dr. Klein looked at his office door. It was the slightest bit ajar. He looked at the door and then at me as I tried to walk away. With a loud thud, he closed the door. I suppose I should walk you back to the lab. I'm heading that way anyway. Oh, that's not necessary, sir. Oh, I insist, please. He gestured for me to lead, broaching no argument. And we walked in silence, making our way through the common area. You feeling alright? Uh, yes, sir, just needed a quick walk. No, I meant more generally. How are you feeling? You haven't had any incidents or exposures, have you? No, sir, nothing like that. Well, good. We here at Genomix value safety above all else. He stopped, putting his hand on my shoulder. We also value the work we do here, which can only happen if we work as a team. That means following directions. You can do that, can't you? Of course, sir, I don't. Good, good. I would hate to have to replace another of Dr. Brenner's assistants so far into our work. Before I could respond, he gestured to the hallway leading to my lab. Thank you for this chat. It was most enlightening. Dr. Klein watched me as I walked away from him, and once I was out of sight, the tension enveloped me and I collapsed. I barely slept the next two days. I tried to process what I had seen in Dr. Klein's office, the geological maps, the information on the moon. What did it all have to do with the substance that we were testing here? As I made my way to the lab, I heard a series of loud cries and growls and I rushed forward. Inside, all the animals were wailing and howling. Monkeys scratched at their cages while dogs barked and howled. The pig from earlier though was bashing itself again and again against these sides of the cage. I made my way to Dr. Brenner's side as he was trying to sedate the raging animal. What the heck is going on here? I don't know, just help me get the tranquilizer through the gate. He yelled over the cacophony of animals. The pig was smashing itself, causing blood to stream from its face. The blood though was black and oily. I helped load the tranquilizer and helped steady the injection, as Dr. Brenner put it in through the thick hide. The doe should have stopped the animal cold, but it just kept smashing itself again and again. Soon, black blood sprayed on me from the impact, which nearly caused me to retch from the smell. As the hinges of the cage buckled under the assault, a loud bang echoed from behind me, and the sounds of animals in the room had ceased. I looked over to see Brenner holding a pistol still pointed at the cage, his hand shaking. I stared at the dead pig. Black eye core oozed out of the bullet wound. A good minute passed before Brenner lowered his arm. What happened here? Dr. Klein yelled, running into the room. I don't know. I came in to do the testing and the specimen had gone berserk. Klein ran to the shot specimen and anger flared. You shot the specimen in the freaking head, you idiot. We can't even get a good autopsy of the thing now. The shock of the situation had seemed to wear off on Brenner. Listen, you self-righteous idiot. That thing was about to break loose and I'd be danged to let another experiment go wild here. The two men stared at each other before Klein threw his hands up. Get that specimen autopsied now. And he stormed out of the room. Brenner gritted his teeth as his portly frame shook. Get a biohazard suit and let's get this dang thing examined. After suiting up, we moved the pig to an examination table. I was glad to have a breathing apparatus as the smell had become intolerable. As we examined the deceased creature, the insides were incredible. 
As the testing had shown, there were no traces of tumors or really any other visible maladies. The viscera was a mix of normal blood and a thick, viscous black liquid. I pulled a sample and I placed it under the microscope. After I did, I shot back from the instrument in shock. Dr. Brenner, please come look at this. What did you find? This black stuff, it's still moving. What do you mean, move aside? Brenner adjusted the scope several times before looking up and back at me. Listen to me very, very carefully. Forget that you saw this. What do you mean? Brenner came over and put his hand on my shoulder. Whatever this substance is that we're testing, this is the exact same result that killed your predecessor. Forget about what you saw, and I'll take this to Dr. Klein. Sir, I don't understand. But Brenner had already begun tearing off his hazmat protection and storming out of the room. The next day, I was called into Dr. Klein's office, my mind still racing for the previous day's events. The movie in Black Blood kept me up all night. I sat across from Klein, who watched me stone-faced. I want to apologize about what you experienced yesterday. Dr. Brenner had lost control of the situation, and you were forced to help clean up his mess. I don't believe that's what happened, sir. As Klein held up a hand towards me, well, there's no need to defend him. Brenner has been removed from this project. Removed? Why? Klein sat back in his chair. He lacked the commitment to meet the goals that we're trying to accomplish here. Sir, where is Dr. Brenner? I would like to speak with him. Well, that would be impossible. He was sent home on a plane this morning. So soon, but I... Klein got up from his chair and walked over to me leaning on the side of his desk. I need you to take over his work. But sir, I don't have the skills or experience. Perhaps, but you've seen what has been going on with the testing. We are close, so close, to making the world's greatest breakthrough here. I don't think that I'm up for this, sir. I replied as Klein stared at me before and nodding to himself. Before you decide, please come with me and he gestured for me to follow him. We walked down the hallways through the complex before arriving at a door labeled Materials Lab. Klein swiped a keycard as the door slid open. Walking inside, I saw stacks of orange hazardous material boxes, but what caught my eye was an object encased in glass on a table. Klein walked over and gestured to what was inside. It appeared to be a rock, jet black and jagged, I walked around it a few times before looking back at Klein. Is this a material that we're working with? Klein nodded and he smiled ear to ear looking at the piece. What do you see? I see a dark rock. I'm not a geologist, sir. No, but you are a biologist. What matters is what's inside this rock. Klein then motioned towards vials of black liquid behind him. This rock contains biological matter older than the Earth itself. I stood mouth agape at the statement. I don't understand. How could a rock be older than Earth? Did you know that the moon did not form with the Earth naturally? Billions of years ago, the planetoid that was Earth orbited the sun alone. But a cosmic visitor, a rogue planet, entered the solar system and collided with the Earth. The result of the cataclysm was the combination of the two spears and the material that would become the moon. What you see here is original matter of that rogue planet, extracted from the deepest part of the earth, as well as samples from the moon. I don't even know how to process this, sir, but what does it have to do with biology then? Klein turned to me. He gave me a look of what I can only describe as hunger. The rogue planet was at least partially biological in nature. This, this is alien. In a cosmic sense, yes. But it is also part of the Earth and the Moon too. We believe from geological scans and surveys, the majority of the Moon is made up of the remnants of the rogue planet. I believe this is why civilization since the dawn of man have worshipped the Moon. It's not just because it is there watching us every night. No, 
It's because the moon is a part of the original celestial visitor to our planet. We are connected to it, bound to it. He turned back to the rock on the table. This material is a gift to be used. You've seen yourself how it heals and mends the bodies of everything that it touches. Imagine no more disease, no more plagues or degenerative conditions. This could turn all of humanity into gods. I was caught up in the amazement and wonder. I had seen the testing data and I had seen the results firsthand. The treatment did seem to cure everything. But then I recoiled. I recalled the pig going mad, its bashing against the cage, the black blood pouring from its head splattering me. But it drives these subjects mad. I know about what happened to my predecessor. Klein stopped smiling as he walked over putting his hands on my shoulders. This is why you are needed here. To refine the treatment. To work out how to deliver the good aspects of it from the bad. Please, you've experienced so much already. It would be a waste to have to send you home as well. In the next few months, I was consumed with work. Though I barely ate or slept, I felt energized with purpose, never having felt better. I had reached a stalling point in the data on animal subjects. There seemed to be a point, no matter the mixing, the dosage or counter agents that the animals eventually would go berserk. Sometimes it was shorter, other times longer but all eventually tried to break free from the restraints. My mind was frazzled in frustration when one night all the test animals with injections began to strain at their cages. Their howls echoed through the lab, and I looked outside to see a full moon in the sky. Some neurological connection in the brain finally realized the relationship. Without asking anyone, I opened the lab bay door and let one of the dogs who received an injection go free. The icy cold arctic air should have cut through me, but I instead felt invigorated and followed the released beast. It howled wildly into the snowy night as I chased behind it. Why I did this I couldn't tell you but it all felt right. The two of us ran in the hard packed snow for longer than either should have been able to until the dog had stopped. As it did, it looked to the full moon in the dark sky and it howled. This was not a canine howl though. It was guttural, primal, and I felt it inside me. I looked up at the moon as if it called to me. I could see it clearer than I ever had before. The craters and dead seas of lava were just cosmetic on the skin. What was below the surface was dormant but alive. While entranced in the moon, I could hear chewing. Tearing and I turned to see the dog ripping apart a carcass. The beast ripped and teared at the flesh and it took me more than a moment to realize what it was eating was a human. A body was frozen and the dog was devouring it. As I came to my senses, I screamed and shoved the dog away, who ran deeper into the snowy field. Looking down at the frozen body, even recently mangled, was identifiable. It was portly and a look of anger and fear in case the final moments of Dr. Brenner. But it was not just a Brenner's body. In the snow were dozens, maybe hundreds of other human remains. I bent down and saw the face of the gossipy bunkmate from when I had first arrived, frozen in rigor mortis. I saw her and others' faces staring at me in the cold night, and I blacked out. The next thing I remember, I woke up in the hospital facility of the complex. I sat upright, pulling the various monitors off my skin as alarms blared at my rejection. A nurse walked in trying to call me to implore me to lay back down, but I shoved her aside. Still trailing the wires, I barged into Dr. Klein's office, who seemed unimpressed with my entry, slowly glancing up. I see you're awake then. I walked over and slammed the files and computer off his desk. What did you do to Dr. Brenner? Why did I find him frozen out there? What were all those bodies out there? Klein sighed as I towered over him. Me like the fortitude to go on with the project, and that's all. Once he told me that you had been exposed, I knew that we had to monitor you, but he refused. He lacked the vision to see what was possible, what you could become. And what have I become then? One of many, hopefully. 
I don't know if you realized it or not yet, but you survived sub-zero temperatures in just your lab gear. You are proof that our work here is successful. It's just a shame so many had to come before you. What do you mean? My fists were now grinding into the desk. Dr. Brenner never told you. You were not his second assistant. No, you were the twelfth. My mind raced at the information. You... You were intentionally exposing me here. Well, not just you, no. Everyone here has been exposed in some way. This isolated facility lets the experiments play out as necessary, and the results are monitored or recorded. Some get injections, other aerosol. Some just receive exposure by being around it or handling it raw. But rejoice. You seem to have lasted the longest so far. I grabbed a client by the collar of his shirt and dragged him forward. You son of a... You used us as lab rats. For someone who experiments on animals, that's a bit high and mighty, don't you think? To create the ultimate medicine that could save the entire species, I would sacrifice a million lives to save billions. The look in Klein's eye was one of pride, not fear, and I threw him against the wall. You're insane. Klein stood up, trying to collect himself. All those with grand vision are told as such, but what matters is that we succeed. You are now the most successful test subject. You've not succumbed to the madness. Please help me continue this grand work by letting me study you, for the good of all humankind. Something inside me broke as the next thing I knew, I looked down to see my hand wrapped around Dr. Klein's throat. Red poured over my fingers as I squeezed his neck, ripping into him. The wide eyes of shock on Klein's face. It was the last memory of him living before tossing him aside. I stood in his office alone for what felt like forever, staring at his body before eventually sitting down at his computer. I right now, sitting here at his desk, Klein's body next to me, to tell you all that has happened, hoping someone out there will read this and help stop this evil. Know that despite everything I've stated here, I'm of sound mind and know how all this sounds, but please, please believe me, don't let Genomix cover this up. I go now to destroy the materials lab, but that does not appear to be the end of this even if I succeed. No, what I felt that night in the snow staring at the moon was hunger. It was a wild calling to the stars that something is awakening. It is there and it calls out. I know this because a part of it is inside of me. And what it feels is what I feel and what I feel is the need to devour all before me.